and habit forming products. Interesting. Uh, Isaac recently joined a commercial bank in Nigeria, especially known for our innovative approach to banking, to lead the building of a banking as a service and embedded products for the Nigerian market. Before he led the core banking bars and um, payments product at Shara, I hope I pronounced that correctly, a fast growing startup that provides a digital banking solution for emerging markets where it set the foundation for building for the building of the first truly banking as a service product for the East African markets. Trust me, um, this person we've got here today has loads of loads of knowledge to share with us. And um, with no further ado, I think uh, we can just have um, Isaac on the call. Uh, Isaac, welcome to People in Products and great to have you here with us, Isaac. Thank you so much. Um, I'm very honored to be here. Um, I can see some of my bigger guys on this on this um, on this call. Um, so before we go, I would actually appreciate I appreciate each and everyone that um, that have joined this call, right? And um, I'm saying a very big thank you to every one of us, right? Um, I'll be sharing my screen in a bit, right? I'll be sharing my screen in a bit, and um, where we're going to talk about, <clears throat> where I'm going to show us the slide. However, as we are having the conversation, um, as we're having the conversation, I would like us to have a lot of, um, thank you, Bridget. Um, I would like us to have, um, what I call it now, a lot of conversations, right? So feel free to feel free to cut me short if you need to, right? Um, you can cut me short, ask questions, and uh, you can raise your hand. And if you feel the question you want to ask um, does not require being cut short in my um, in my um, presentation, you can drop the question in the uh, in the chat, right? Um, I hope. We can see my screen in a bit. Nope, 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 nope. Sorry, just a minute. I think I did a mistake there. Sorry, one minute. Um, share. Hmm. Okay. If you can see on my screen, you can just um, show some kind of um, reaction, right? So um, basically this evening, okay, thank you so much for that. So basically we'll be talking about how to build our career, career just like we build um, our products. I think um, in the past I've been thinking about a number of things, right? Like um, if my career is actually, if my day-to-day -day is building a product, right? How can I build my career just like I can build my product. It's something I've actually been thinking about for a very long time. And when I have the opportunity to actually speak, right, I um, I feel very happy to um, actually talk about, about this, right? So um, first of all, I'm sure we are very much from, all of us are familiar with um, product management. I want to assume everybody on this um, channel is familiar one way or the other with product management, product development, right? We know what it means. And um, knowing that it's going to be, it's going to make it easy with some of the terminologies that I'll be using because I'm actually, I'm literally trying to adapt those um, product terminologies to, um, to product and um, to our career development, right? So let's quickly lay the foundation. First of all, um, I would like somebody to quickly answer me, right? When we want to build a product, what's the first thing we actually do? The very first thing we we'll do. Somebody should feel free to unmute and give a response to that, please. Okay. 
what is the very first thing we do when we are trying to build a product? Anybody, please, if you can hear me. Anybody, do I, should I call? <laughs> Nobody wants to answer. Please, somebody should please unmute and just tell me, what do you think is the first thing you do when you want to build a product? How do you lay the foundation? Uh, Hello. Get a requirement. Okay. Hello. Hi. Um, so I'm saying you get at the requirement and you probably first of all think about I don't know why I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Can people hear me, please? Uh, can you hear me now? Hello. I can hear now. Okay, I think I have an issue. Maybe I will have to rejoin the call. I can't hear anybody. Just a minute, please. Let me just rejoin. I can't hear anybody. So guys, I think um, Isaac is having some technical problems. So let's just give him a few minutes to sort that out and then we'll continue. Um, let's, let me try to reach him offline and then I'll, I'll get back to everyone. Yeah, you may not I think, I can, I, think oh, I can hear you. Can hear oh, cool. Yes, yeah. yes. Right. It's back. In foundation. Mm. We stopped at foundation. Foundation, yes. So yeah. yeah, so I was asking, what's the very first thing? Um, what's the very first thing we do when we want to build a product? Okay, since I'm already on mute, I can start. So yeah. let's say research, either to find out more about the problem, or if you ha already have like a solution in your mind, you're trying to validate that um, approach or validate that um, idea that you have. So mainly it circles around the questions you're asking. So probably research. Okay, cool. Nice. We'll carry out research. Then after research, um, one, of, one of the other things we try to do is to set our goals one way or the other, right? We we'll research, we we'll try to understand what it is, and from there we we'll, would we'll set on, right? Um, but one of, for amongst many things that we do as, um, as a foundation for for um, in building our product, right? Um, what is very important to me right now is actually setting clear goals, right? When we are building our products, um, one of the very first thing we do, one of the early things we do is we set, clear, we set clear goals. What is the problem we are trying to solve and how are we trying to solve it? So the same thing in um, building our career, I think it's very, not I think, it's actually very important beyond selling and um, beyond collect um, taking salaries right beyond people paying us um, huge salary or slim salary competitive or non-competitive salary it's very important we actually know what exactly we are trying to do with our career what do we want to achieve am i a product manager so that someday i'll become the chief product officer for maybe a fortune 500 or for a unicorn or for a hundred billion dollar worth company right or I'm trying to be a product manager so that someday I would be able to, I would own my own product. Or I'm trying to be a product manager so that I'll become a product consultant or I'll become a thought leader, right? Just like some very popular um, big pro product guru are, I'm on the long run. 
it's very important we actually set this from the get-go right um and when we are setting our goal it's also important that we set our short and long-term goals right and when we are setting our short and long-term goals we need to understand that our short-term goals should cascade in i'm sorry we should um is it dovetail is dovetail the right word now into our long-term goal right um, long term goal. Long term goal. I want to be the. I want to become the chief product officer. Um, I want to become the chief product officer for a big organization. But what exactly do I need to do now? Right? How am I working towards achieving that? I have the big goal. I have the big vision. But today, what am I doing towards that? It's not like I want to be um, chief product officer and I. I'm going for chief product officer role right from there. I have to start from learning, right? Um, another goal could be, hey, I want to set my footprint in fintech. For example, I want to become maybe the go-to person in fintech. I want to be the go-to person in edtech, just like um, Bridget is today, right? Everybody knows Bridget and children and education for children and stuff, right? Um, you know, like, do I want to become that key figure, right? I think Azodo is on this call too. Everybody knows him with FinTech and a lot of other people. So it's important we set that goal right from the get go. And I would say it, I've said this again, and I'm st I'll still say it again, that money is only a reward for, money is just a reward for the value you are adding to the system. Money should never be the goal, yes work your passion people will tell you passion doesn't pay bills yeah i will tell you that passion pays bills on the long run if you want the money now yeah money would come but how long is it sustainable right so when you are setting out in building your product career make sure that all these things are actually um very much in place now the next thing we try to do is after we know okay i want to do this i want to build you know when we want to build a product i want to solve payment problem. Sorry, I will use a lot of fintech um, issues because that's the um, space where I play. Um, I want to build, I want to build a pro, um, I want to build a, um, a payment solution. People are having trouble paying. For example, one of the key challenge here is um, payments takes a long time. I want to, I want people to be able to make payments in less than one second and get results. That's the, that's what I want to do. I've already set that goal right from the get go. The next thing for me to do is to do market research. And how does this actually um, affect me in building my career? It's very important to actually understand what the industry trend is, right? Staying updated is not what you cannot just, um, we cannot, you can be a product manager and you tell me that you don't know what's happening. If I ask, I don't know anything in the ed tech space and Bridget, thank you very much for being here. I will use it a lot as example. I don't know anything in the in the um, ed tech space, right? Um, but I'm sure if I ask Bridget today, what the new government policy or was the government was government's plan for edu for children education, basic education is? She can literally tell me for, on the tip as in at the tip of her fingers, right? She will tell me, okay, this is what it is. This is how it has been. This is what it is right now. This is what we are likely, um, this is what we are looking forward to based on history and current happenings in the ed education space, right? Um, <laughs> someone said, Bridget, you know, no, okay. Bridget, take your shit anyways. So, you know, it's very important to just stay um, updated with the industry. And I would also say this, that most of the times what you are <laughs> what you actually try to do is what you actually pay for most of the time is your um is your um i'm, I'm trying to learn I'm, I'm trying to get the term the right term right now um being a subject matter expert right at the start you can try out a lot of things but you know the moment to discover that space where you want to be right and yeah, the moment to discover that space you want to be, you have to keep yourself as updated as possible. And also note that being updated is not just, when, you're, when we say um, update, I'm not just saying your, your, um, the industry in terms of maybe FinTech, EdTech, industry, there are a lot of industry that contributes to your career. So as a FinTech product manager, I need to understand the FinTech industry, 
um, because I work in the startup space, I need to understand what's happening in the in the startup world. Because I'm a product manager, I need to understand what's happening in in the product product management space. Because I work with technology, I need to understand what's happening in the technology industry, tech industry generally, right? What's the trend? Um, because um, um, cryptocurrencies were trending like four or five years ago and up to like last, um, up to COVID, post-COVID, what's happening, I need to be up to date. Not because I'm just in fintech space, because, but because I'm in tech space. I need to understand, okay, AI, this is what AI is doing right now. Do I think AI is here to stay or is it going to die some quick death like cryptocurrency and stuff like that, right? I need to be up to date in all those things. And being up to date in all these areas does not mean that I am pivoting or I'm changing every moment these things are coming. It does not mean um, I'm learning them to become a subject matter expert in them. There are times you need to just be updated. I just need to know what's happening. Just like you, need you um, for football lovers, just like, okay, let me give an example. You are an Arsenal fan, right? For example, you know what's happening in Arsenal. You also know what's happening in Chelsea. And you know what's happening in Champions League. You know what's happening in La Liga. You know what's happening in Bundesliga. Not because those ones are necessarily affecting you directly but you know one way or the other they're affecting they will affect your club and use it to know what's happening to that club that you like the same way the same thing applies in um in when you are building your career right um the next thing i will quickly want to talk about about industries you need to also you need to be very much vast you need to be ready to learn as much as possible and you need to be adaptable how is today, how is AI affecting edge tech? That's what Bridget will be concerned in. One of the things I'm sure Bridget is concerned about. For me, I'm concerned on how is AI affecting fintech infrastructure, right? How does this affect fintech infrastructure? How is AI affecting my customers? How is AI affecting my users? How can I infuse? Is this technology something I can infuse into the products I'm trying to build, right? Is this something I need to learn and understand better than just in the surface to make me make better decisions, right? So you need to be there. You have to also be adaptable. You know, one of the one of the key problems with um, the old generation industries is they are stiff, right? They're, they're not flexible. They're not agile. They're not adaptable. But you as a product manager, I'm sorry, you trying to build your career just like you build your products, you need to be adaptable. And I think that's one of the um, key value propositions of um, agility, right? Agile. So um, that is that about that. Now, the very next thing, we are driving this down to us as individuals. Feel free to ask questions. You can unmute your mic to ask questions. You can drop messages as well, right? Um, um, OK, Bridget says she's interested in driving um, driving revenue. Don't worry. Come and talk to me. I will help you for some cash. Yeah, so feel free to ask questions, right? So now let's quickly talk about value proposition. How do we? Um, how do I create my own value proposition, right? You have to define your value proposition. What value do you stand for, right? Um, what is that unique? That was the very unique thing about you. What makes you stand out, right? It's not something you. It's not something you know from the very first day. It's something. Sometimes it takes a while for you to um, to learn and to understand. Some other times, yeah, you might you might discover it early. But the earlier you discover it, I think uh, um, the better it is for you, right? Um, um, what actually differentiates Isaac as a product, as a fintech product manager from Azodo, right? Our guy at the top in fintech, right? What is that thing? I'm not saying that I want to take, I'm not definitely, I'm not, I don't even want to take his place. I don't want to be him. I don't want to be like him. I want to be like me. I want to be me. And for me to be me, what is that thing that makes me different, right? What is that? What are those collection of skills that, when I marry them together, it actually makes me become the right, as in the um, the right man for the job, right? Okay, that's also very important. What are my strengths? What are the skills I have? What are the key strengths I have? I know somebody, right? There's this particular guy I know is a, is a great product manager and. When you share idea with this guy, it might not be a very good, it's good with execution, don't get me wrong, right? But one of the very good things about him is he has a very great product sense. 
telling him, um, just giving him a one minute pitch about a product is already telling you what you need to look out for, what are the important things that, um, what are the important things that are very important to the product you're trying, um, you are trying to build. How are you going to, um, um, a link to the slide, you're going to get that later, right? Um, what are the what are the most important things that um, you can you can consider, right? How best can you generate revenue for your product? Um, what are the things customers will likely like and will not likely like, right? It might not be very good with it's good with execution. Don't get me wrong, but it's not like execution is not his key thing. But when it comes to ideation, when it comes to um, product sense, is very great at it, right? So it's very important for us and this particular guy that I know has used that a lot to his advantage, right? It, uh, he has used it a lot to get into the room. And because he knows he's not the best when it comes to execution, one of the key things this guy usually do is the moment he gets into the room, he tries to identify the guys that are very, that are extremely good and that are better than him in terms of execution. And he works with them. We're going to talk about collaboration, right? Down the line. Now, the next thing is, you building your future sets, right? And when I say building your future sets, I'm actually talking about um, skill development. When you're building your product, you want to have you you want to introduce um, a number of features. Might not be a lot, but each of the features that you're trying to um, introduce, um, you want to ensure that this feature are very relevant to your product vision. They are very relevant to, um, to the goal that you set earlier on. They are very relevant to satisfying your customers, right? And you also understand that for every, you don't just introduce any feature into your product without you having a very, um, without you being intentional about the feature you're trying to, um, you're trying to introduce, right? So in this case, okay, Yusuf, let me finish. Then you ask a question. So in this case, you can um, you can sort of um, you can sort of when you're introducing new skill sets, right? You need to know how does this skill set actually help me. These are the skill sets that I have. How can I improve on this? And how can I contribute that into being a very great um, product, right? And when you improve on each of these skills, when you when you optimize the skill sets that you have, one very good thing about it is you become very marketable. What you know people for is majorly their ability, what they are very good at. So if I'm thinking of, say I have a football club today and I want to hire, sorry, I want to hire yeah, a football man, like a coach, assuming my budget is unlimited, right? Um, my budget is unlimited. The resources I have is unlimited. I'm sure football lovers on this, um, on this, on this, um, what's it called? On this chat knows which football manager I should hire based on my needs, right? If I'm trying to bring up new skills, I'm trying to discover fresh skills and raise them to become who they need to be. I'm sure one of the people that I might think about will be um, former Arsenal coach, right? Because he's just very good at bringing players from nowhere players people don't know, bring them up, brush them up, and sell them, right? Because it's good at that. But if I'm looking for players that are already made, right, but I want them to win trophies for me, maybe Jose Moreno might just come to mind. So everybody have their own unique skill set. And being able to enhance that ability, that skill that we have would position us for um, um, being marketable. Then we should not be afraid to acquire new skills. That's also very important. Yeah, Yusuf, you can go ahead and ask a question. Thank you. All right, Isaac. Um, thank you for that presentation so far. So um, I initially wanted to wait to the end of the presentation, but I realize the point you are explaining it is best time I can ask so that you can explain it all together. So um, my question is that when you were trying to explain um, trying to expand your skill, uh, what is it called, skill, you, before you start explaining this building your future set, you were talking mm -hmm. about trying to know, um, to understand things in your environment. Like you're trying to say, we should know something about everything, but know everything about something. So yeah. as, a product, as a product manager, um, like myself now, I'm a technical product manager who actually trying to look at, um, what is it called in understanding the fintech system very well? So, trying to now 
learn things like the new development time of security now um every um fintech companies is now looking at how can this trend security which i believe is something that um pretty much just so we understand that so considering the kind of workload that's already um embedded in products uh, manager desk so how would you encourage product manager to maximize their time according to those things um the technology that they have at hand to be able to venture into uh learning on some skills that will be that will be beneficial to their product like the like myself now i'm looking at learning cyber security uh, cyber security at least have some knowledge about it so that i can be able to invest in my um uh, product but every time i try to do this thing i always find no time because there's always something to do there are always something to update always something to learn so these are things i'm trying to like ask Okay, cool. Yeah, so I think down the line, um, there's actually a there's, a, there's a section that is tagged time management, right? And I'm going to address that um, when we get to time management, right? Um, that's also part of what we need to do, right, about prioritization. And also, I think I will share, I would love to share some tips on how to actually do that, right? Reading is good, taking courses is good. Taking, reading is good. Okay, taking courses is good. Reading is great, right? But I think there are better ways to actually get some of these skills faster, right? Faster than doing these two things. Most especially if we know that it's not our core area. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's good. Cool. That's cool. Okay, cool. So when when we get to um, when we get to time management, I'm I'm going to talk about that. And in case I don't share the tip, please remind me. I'll definitely share some of the tips that that has worked for me, right? So um cool so we've talked about um, building our future sets then the next thing we try to do is when you finish building your product you've launched your product into the market you are in the market as a product manager what is that next thing that you do you begin to have some iterative improvements right okay um it takes my users 10 seconds to be able to log into the platform that is not very great um i need to improve on um, I need to improve on um, the speed of login. I want my users to be able to log in in less than one second or in less than two seconds. Um, I've introduced these. I've introduced payments, but it takes my users seven steps to make payment, and it's quite um, that's some bottlenecks. Step three and four are bottlenecks. Can I reduce this to um, four steps and eliminate those bottlenecks and move on? Right. So the same thing in your career, you need to learn from failures and successes. And one of the things many people actually find difficult here, like, like let's quickly talk a bit about this, is many people love, everybody shouts about their successes, most especially, especially when you go on LinkedIn. Sometimes you feel depressed and be like, God, all the while I've been doing all this, what am I even doing with my life, <laughs> right? Nobody usually talks about their success, I mean, about their failures rather. Only few people actually write the stories about their failure. Um, However, some people write about their failure and the way they write about it, they still write about it like, oh, I fail in this thing, but nah, even not for the special skills I have, that's why I'm successful. Now, one of the very first things, one of the key things we need to learn is this. Um, for every little failure we have, we experience, right, in our career, we need to make it, we need to actually turn those failures um, into, um, into, stepping stones and i'm going to share my own personal story here the very first the very first time i spoke in a very uh, as into a very big audience right it was um yeah i spoke to a very very big like very very big audience i had opportunity to speak on a um an international product management platform and this particular time the topic i choose i know it theoretically right i never applied it and I was there to speak on this topic for 30 minutes. I spoke on it for 20 minutes. And people started asking me questions. And I found myself wanting. So what happens? And these people that are asking me questions were like, yeah, big people. Like, I, if I mention a couple of their names, right? Like the founder of Product Coalition, um, a lot of other guys were there. They were asking questions. And I was I was wiggling my way through. I wiggled my way. I couldn't wait for the ten minutes to pass. The ten minutes passed. 
But guess what? It was a big flop. After everything, they sent me the recording of it. Thank God they did not publish it. They sent it to me and said, if I want to share, I can share my social. Up till today, even myself, I don't even know where the link to that to that presentation is, right? I don't know where I kept it. And what that means is normally I'm supposed to actually forget about presentations, public speaking, or talking to audiences about product management, sharing my knowledge about whatever it is. But instead of that, what happened was I took a break from speaking, right? Even to smaller audiences, I took a break and I went back, I watched those videos a couple of times. I watched the video a couple of times and before I, even, before I don't even know why I kept the link anymore. And after watching the video, what I did next was I went back to start building my skills again. And I made up my mind. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to speak on a topic I don't have a practical hands-on knowledge of. Right? Now, what I did pushed me. But I pushed myself to do what I did. And it failed. But rather, rather than saying it, rather than saying it as failure, I go back to learn to start learning from my failure. Also, I also needed to learn from my successes, right? Another story I'm going to share with us is today. I'm saying, hey, I'm passionate about building fintech infrastructure. I think the very first infra product that was given to me, first fintech infra product that was given to me, it took me six months to struggle i struggled for like six months to understand how that product works right let alone of building right and <laughs> i struggled every now and then i talked to more senior product managers please can you explain this thing to me they will explain to me then i'll go again um i want to write a documentation i'm writing documentation before i present before i give it to my manager i'll go back to more senior product managers that in my in my office right okay look at what i've written they will tell me oh this is rubbish I feel bad about it. it took me like six months of struggling right but one thing is very important i continue to learn and i never give up continued and continue and continue to learn and trust you uh, trust me when i understood how this thing worked the moment i understood how this thing worked is like um is like um they 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 open a dam right and the whole water flow just hit me right and i began to swim in it and it, it's, it looks like it's nothing to me. Even today, if I say concepts I don't understand in fintech, I don't think it will take me another, it can't take me six months. I don't think it will even take me two days to actually um, crack it and understand how it works now, right? So the same thing we need to, we need to start seeing, we need to start looking for ways to empower ourselves with different failures. That failures, failures actually come in different ways. Sometimes it's embarrassing, sometimes there are failures that we are the only ones that know that, so this is actually a flop, right? Um, so the same way we need to learn from, start learning from our failure. And also when we, ask, when we succeed, it's very important we, we also learn from, from what makes us successful. What do we actually do right? And even in those things that we did right, definitely there are some mistakes we make. We should not forget. And one thing I always tell people, and one thing that I also apply to myself every now and then is what I call... The, the, I think my most favorite, one of my favorite words, right, in the whole um, scrum ceremony is that retrospect thing. And I apply this to myself every now and then. If I do, if I speak, I go back and retrospect. If I do anything, I go back and retrospect personally. And I don't mind asking people, right, as in people I know I can talk to, okay, what do you think about this thing that I've done, right? I ask my superiors and I also ask my um um, my subordinates, right? What do you think about this thing? Oh, do you think what I've done is the best? What do you think? Do you think there are better ways we can actually get this done, right? By that, by um, by by um, accepting feedbacks, it will actually help us a whole lot, right? To um, to do what we what we are supposed to do. Now, the next thing is collaboration and networking. Yeah, a lot of people actually jump all the steps we talk about and. What they want to do is they want to collaborate. Yes, that's the essence of PIP. That's the essence of PM Africa. That's the essence of um, all the product communities we know, right? For people to be able to collaborate and network. But before collaboration and networking, 
you have to put a lot of things in it and also when you're collaborating and when you're networking you have to be it's something you need to be intentional about okay so when i said being intentional about it i'm talking about understanding why we need to um um why we need to collaborate right now let, let me quickly say this as a product manager in your office in your various office we all know that every now and then we need to speak with people in other teams we need to collaborate with them even the people we don't love i write a i write a piece sometimes i think last year right and the piece was like i don't that in the piece the person said something he said i don't necessarily need to like the person i'm working with but i still need to work with them all the same right office is not a place of um office is not a place for likable people right office is a place for people we can work with so in this case the same thing we need to learn and understand the essence of networking just like i work with legal guys i work with i think one of the most annoying people to me as a product manager are compliance guys i hope none of them is here right compliance guys can be very annoying very very annoying right but you know what i still have to work with them yeah fintech guys are here right okay cool i have to work with them I don't need to like them i need to work with them the same thing when it comes to building my career network there are some people yeah your manager is one of those people you need to network with yes that your manager that man that woman or that guy is just that guy is a pain right you need to network with the person you need to understand how to work with that person because they have insights that you don't have and that's the main reason for networking right when you network with people when you meet new people when you meet people in the industry you try to get insights from them you try to get information from them do you know that the the um your next career breakthrough is actually lying with um lies with somebody somewhere that will just give tell you something or that you just hear something from i'm also going to say this um which day i think yesterday or two days ago i went on linkedin and i don't know what i was doing and somehow i stumbled on the number of jobs i've applied to so far on linkedin and when i checked it's surprising to me that it's actually counting in over it's over a thousand so far the number of jobs i've applied to on linkedin interesting enough is to know that in all my career i have not gotten any job i expressly applied to never ever so all those 1000 plus jobs i actually applied to never came through right it's either a recruiter reaches out and say hey we have this role available right or somebody somewhere somebody in the room that i don't have access to is speaking on my behalf to say hey i know a guy that can actually help you with this right so that is actually the essence of networking those guys that can speak for you in those rooms right it is very very important we um we actually um take advantage of that right and also networking with the right set of people actually gives us that relevance makes us remain relevant in the industry right most especially when it comes to career advancement today if i want to ask questions about lending i know the person i'm going to go and ask straight up i'm not going to think about it twice if i want to ask questions about children education right I know that Bridget is here. I'm going to call Bridget. Bridget, how far, please? Um, what's happening in, in EdTech space? I have something I want to sell to you guys. I have something, I have a problem I'm trying to solve, right? So that's the whole essence of um, networking. Now, the next phase is adaptability. Yeah, this is pretty uh, interesting. And for adaptability, we're talking about how you pivot your career path. Yes. So this is, I think I have a slide where I would we'll have some conversation, right? Okay, so before then. So in terms of adaptability, you've heard about pivoting. And one thing is very certain, I don't know if anybody here has worked on products that literally pivot. You are building a product and along the line, you have feedbacks, you have, you have feedbacks, you've read, um, you've worked on the product, the product is not working, um, you've done, you have enough data, you've analyzed and you just know at the end of the day, you reach a conclusion and say the solution to this problem is and to the solution to us not scaling is actually pivoting our product right here is 
where it applies in our career. But one thing is very important here, and it's like a caveat I'm going to give, right? You don't pivot because you hit roadblocks. You pivot because you have enough evidence to prove that your product is not working. The same thing in your career. I've seen a lot of people, like, I check some people's LinkedIn sometimes, and I'm seeing something like, um, I'm a product manager. So hear this, I'm a product manager. Um, so on their LinkedIn, they have product management, branch, product, branch, sales, the same person, right? Sales, um, QA, um, somebody should give me another idea, one more idea, right? <clears throat> to me, if I want to hire, if I'm looking for somebody to join my team, I will never, yeah, they have multiple skills. I will never even look at them, right? Because it makes me feel like they don't even know what they are doing. You have to be known for something. And if you want to pivot, make your pivot very strategic, right? Um, know that pivoting here is very important. I wrote an article on my blog sometimes, some couple of weeks ago when I talked about product mentors and product coach, yeah, which one you need or something like that. The same, and so I think this is where we actually need mentors, right? To actually guide us on, okay, you know what? I'm not even talking about coaching, I'm talking about mentors. Okay, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, it's not working. So my mentor, because the mentor has experience and knows what it is, the mentor would be able to give us some high level, um, 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 what's it called now, advice on, okay, you may want to consider pivoting your career. You may want to um, you may want to move from where you are to where you're supposed to be, right? So that's very important. And it's also very great, important for us to know what exactly we need to do. So now I'm on time management. Someone has asked this question. How do you prioritize for impact, right? One of the key things you do in program management is um, prioritization, right? And a program manager that doesn't know how to prioritize would end up, may end up building products that are not so great, right? Or most likely we end up building products that are not so great. How do I prioritize? How do I prioritize? What are the important things? What should I do first? What should I do next? Do I need to dedicate another one month learning about cybersecurity? So I'm answering Yusuf's question now, right? Do I need to dedicate another one month learning about cybersecurity? Do I need to, um, how important is cybersecurity in my career? Is it useful for the current products I'm building or is useful for, or is useful for, um, what's it called? Is useful for, um, 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 is useful for my lifelong career, right? We need to understand this. We need to um, define this. We need to understand what exactly is the importance of this um, um, prioritization, right? Um, um, also, I need to know what exactly I need to do. Most of us should be familiar with the 80-20 rule, right? What is that skill that requires 20% of my time and will help me solve 80% of my problem? We need to be able to identify that. The moment we're able to identify that, trust me, life's, life is easier. Now, let me quickly share some quick hacks on what I do. And before I share the hack, I will also quickly mention this. There are four quick, there are four ways we learn. And it's very important we understand which of them works best for us. Many people, some people learn by reading, some people learn by writing, some other people learn by listening. And some other people learn by talking. Mine is very strange. I learn by talking, right? I learn a lot when I talk. If you understand how best you learn, that would help you understand what is the best way or what is the best strategy you can take in learning. If I want to learn about cybersecurity today, I don't think with my own personality and with how much work I have at hand, I don't think I want to go and enroll for a cybersecurity course, right? To learn about security. Does that mean I will not build a robust and secured product? 
No, I will, be, I will still build a robust and well-secured product. One of the key things I will try to do is engage my security guys, my, my security, ex, the ex, security experts in my team. And I ask a lot of questions. I'm trying to build this and this and this and this and this, right? What do you think, right? In the process, and this is how I said I learn by talking, right? In the process of him explaining to me, I have 3,000 ideas and I bring out most important, um, thank you Azudo for sharing that link, right? So I bring out, um, what's it called? I bring out the key points, right? From those 3,000 ideas, okay, what if, what if, what if, what if? Now I will end up spending maybe one hour or two hours discussing with my security guy in the team. And I will learn a whole lot, right? And I'll be able to go back and make rapid and quick decisions rather than dedicating another one month learning about cybersecurity, right? If I want to learn about compliance today, if, if there's something about compliance I don't understand, is that me going ahead to take compliance courses or instead of me going ahead to um, um, to take um, to to go and read the volume one, volume two, three, and four um, regulatory um, volumes from 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 CBN, then I will now go and learn from um, um, SEC and every other person, right? No, instead of me to do that, I would rather go and meet my compliance guys and have discussions with the person. That's how I personally hack my way through um gathering new skills sometimes even learning skills right or learning as in knowing how to navigate some certain things so i think that's that's how it works for me and i think that might also work for you as well right for any other person so um however i don't mind putting money or putting or learning a lot of skills uh, as in or taking courses around those core things that will make me be a better product manager, that will make me be a better product leader, that will make me make better business decisions, right? And an example of this is this, right? I spent, I have technical background. I studied computer science in school. Um, all my life, even before I got into university, I've been doing a lot of technical related stuff, right? For so many years, right? Um, today, if I want to learn about business, for some key things, I'm going to take courses about them. For some other things, I'll go through blogs and read because I know that saves my time. For some other, from other ones that I want to save way more time, I would watch videos about them, right? And for the very, if I want to maximize my time to the best, I'll talk to people in the business space about it. Okay, this and this and this and this. What do you think? Sometimes I get during social gatherings, during professional gatherings, I make sure I have like three, four professionals. Then I throw my question so that I can get four, five, six people's um, opinion at the same time, right? So that's one of the ways, that's those are one of the ways I hack my prioritization in terms of skill um gathering, right? Um, so the next one is feed feedback loop. I think I've talked about this before, right? And at this juncture, right, I want us to start our discussion, right? Um, you have to have, you have to continuously um, seek feedback. That's very important. Continuously, nonstop seek feedback. Okay, how better could I have done this? Um, what do you think about this? Do you think this works? Do you think this doesn't work? And you can do that successfully with your, um, you can do that with your mentor, you can do that with your manager, you can do that with your colleagues, you can do that even with your friends and family, right? Um, I have a couple of friends, I just dial them, I just call them, hey guys, this is what I've been up to, this and these are what I've done, these are the decisions I make. And I listen to them, they tell me a whole lot. Okay, you know what? Oh, that is great, that is not very great. Um, you could have done that if I was the one, this is what I would do. And from there, I actually learned a whole lot, right? Now, um, the, my question to us, and this is where I'm going to open the mic for us to have um, discussions, Reese. How do you think you can leverage feedback to identify your strength, your weakness, and areas that requires improvement? How? So my mic is open now. Um, the mic for everyone is open. Thank you so much for listening to my... But five minutes later. talk. Um, thank you, Isaac. I think that, that was a wonderful and impactful session. Um, 
amazing, amazing stuff. I think I, I've learned a lot of things on this call, really. And I'm really grateful for, for that. Um, okay, we are now in the Q&A session. So if you have any question uh, and want to respond to Isaac, um, please, let's go for it. Questions, questions, questions. I think someone had a question in the chat. He was asking if Isaac would be gracious enough to share his slides. Right, yes. Oh yeah, I mentioned earlier that I will share that later after the presentation. I will share with um, PIP and they will share that with everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Emeka. I mean, um, my, my question is, uh, I think when you talk about the feedback, um, how do you get? How do you how do you work with feedback? My question would be, do feedback really need to be some form of appraisal? Because most times when you seek for a feedback, it becomes like an appraisal um, and I say exercise. Is, is there a better way that we can all get to work with feedback, right? Let feedback be a feedback and appraisal be appraisal. Okay, so... Um... <clears throat> I'm a very informal person. I hate the whole formality of, I hate, in fact, at work, I don't wait for appraisals, right? I know what my appraisal would be before time, before it's time for appraisal. And I think for every single step we take, it's important we just informally seek for feedback. Um, I'm looking for a very good example to actually um, share here, right? A, um, um, one of the one of the great examples I would like to share is um, um, come in just a minute. I'm thinking. Okay, so we've attended a, meet, a meeting, right? With all of us, let's say people in the team have attended meeting. The next thing I would likely do after the meeting is I might not necessarily even ask what do you think about what I've said in the meeting, right? Just like. So what do you think about this whole conversation? I'll just pick somebody in the meeting, right? From the meeting, outside of, as we're walking out of the meeting room, we're like, okay, so what do you think about this, right? Don't you think about this? What about this? This is what I think, this is what I think, right? Do you do you share the same sentiment with me? People that will actually give me honest, honest opinion. They will share their honest opinion, right? Tell me, this is what I think, this is what I think. This is what I, I feel should be done. Um, and in that process, as we're having that conversation, if I feel one, if, if there's something I've done that I'm not so courageous about, maybe I've done something and I'm not very sure about it. I just ask the person right there and there. So what do you think about what I said during this time? Or what do you think about that question that I asked earlier on during the call? And that is not appraisal. It's not adding to anything, right? Um, if it is my manager, what I usually do with my managers is I usually always have what I, I always have, I if my manager does not set up weekly check-in calls with me, I find a way to make sure I have check-in calls. And during that check-in calls, all I try to do is, uh, so so far so good, this is what I've been working on, right? Uh, this is the feedback you're expecting to hear from me and these are the things I've done so far concerning that feedback. But I'm having challenges here and here and here and here, right? Or these and these are the things I've done. In that process, definitely good managers would always tell you. They always give you feedback. Oh, that's nice. Um, I like what you've done, but I think you can do it this way, this way, and this way. And those don't necessarily come as appraisers. They are very informal, but they also um, come around um, giving us, um, they also come around um, giving us ways to improve on what we've done. I hope I answer your question, Emeka. Hello, Emeka, did I answer your question? Yes, 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 you did. So that's also a feedback. I'm trying to get a feedback from you if I answer <laughs> questions rightly. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, any other question from anybody? Um, I think there is a question that says, are you available for mentoring um, or as a coach? Nope, not at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, I saw someone in the in the chat say mentors are difficult to come by. I, I think it's very important. Um, 
it's not like I actually do that round the clock, but um, the thing is, at every point in time, I have at least one person I'm actually mentoring, right? Well, no, mostly coaching, right? I do more of coaching than mentorship. Um, the challenge with it is most of the times when people come around and say, hey, come and be my mentor. I think um, Azodo has an article. Please, Azodo, if you are still on this call, please share that link to the article where it shares um, tips on how to get a mentor. If anybody walks to me and say, hey, Isaac, be my mentor, in my head, I think that's the that's almost the last conversation we are having. Not because I'm trying to be, um, not because I'm trying to be wicked, right? But because of the way they usually come. More often, like 90% of the times, those people that come and say, be my mentor, end up, right? End up not even coming around. Or when they come around, you just feel like, oh, why is this person just bugging me? Build relationship. And I think from building relationship, you move on, right? Um, so register for the GMS. What's GMS? What's GMS? OK, it's group like mentorship session. session. Okay. Yeah. OK, cool. Yeah. Thank you, Azudo. So he actually, Azudo shares some tips on how to, how to, um, um how to how to choose a mentor right to advance your career then i also have an article somewhere where i wrote about um where i also wrote about um difference between mentors and and coach right i think those two articles would actually help us okay i think there's one more question and uh, you know we started at 705 so we can graciously end at 805. Thank you, everyone who has waited till now. So Onye Chuku said, um, I have a question. How do you deal with imposter syndrome as a product manager? I know it's not directly related with um, this particular presentation, but if you have the time, can you help us quickly answer that? Yes. Um, and I also like any other person that wants to contribute to it, to contribute to it after my answer. So one of the things is this. I think I wrote something some days ago, not on my WhatsApp status, right? And I was like, um, what's it again? I, I was talking something about value, like understanding our value, right? Being able to rate ourselves right. When you don't rate yourself right, is it that you undersell yourself or you oversell yourself, right? Um, so one thing about imposter syndrome is if you feel like you can't do it, at that point in time should be the time you should give it a try. And one of the ways I personally try to overcome imposter syndrome is by taking baby steps. Okay, so I've had careers in my life where I've had, in my, I've, I had two managers in my life, right? Two, two great managers. And what those two people ended up doing with my, with the film, with all the months I worked with them, all together, the two of them put together was about 10 months of working with them. No, sorry, one year, 10 months. That's like 22 months, right? Working with them, with the two managers, two different companies. What it ended up doing to me was when I left the first person, I became depressed because there's nothing you ever do that is right. And when you do the right thing, she will never tell you, well done. She will never praise you for what you've done. Rather, she would take that, oh, I'm sorry for using, I don't want to use the person's gender, right? But I've done. So she would rather use that thing that you've done to get appraisal, like positive appraisal from her own manager. You understand, right? So it makes me feel bad, like, okay, maybe I just don't know what to do. Maybe I don't know how to talk. Maybe I don't know how to do this. There's another manager I had, that person have similar attitude, but this person will literally talk you down. And I remember one day, this particular one I can never forget. That is the first time I cried as a product manager. I cried, I shed tears in the office. We were having presentation about roadmaps. Everybody was presenting their roadmap about, as in their products roadmap. And everybody came up with their gun. Everybody had Gantt charts. Every single person, including the very senior product managers, they came up with their own Gantt charts and everything. They shared it blah 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 then i came up with my own with i came up with my um now next later kind of thing right this is what i'm focused on now 
this is what I want to do next, and this is what I will do later. And guess what? As I was like the last person to present because I was the I was the most junior of all the team. So they started from the senior ones to the junior ones. So as I shared my screen, the first thing my manager did was laugh. As if that was not bad enough. The manager laughed. And the next thing the manager did was say, Isaac, why must your own be different from every other person? Everybody have been presenting, showing us timelines on when they would execute. So you've come here to present us with no timeline. What, why does it? Guess what? I disconnected my system and I could not talk again. I just put my head on the table and I was crying. And that was it, right? I left that place and I went back again to start reading about roadmaps, right? How to create roadmaps and stuff like that for products. And guess what? The most senior of the product managers, apart from the head of products that made that comment, came to me and said, after some days, said, Isaac, do you know that you were right with the way you presented your roadmap? What we did was wrong and what you did was right. But guess what? I was already dampened and till I left that company, I never put my mind at work because of that incident. So what did I do afterwards? After then, I realized that my approach also was wrong in terms of taking my mind off it. What I should have done is focus my energy on the other wins that I had. And I would have actually capitalized on that guy that came back to me and say what I did was right. Right? I would have capitalized on it, not to spite other people, but to encourage myself to say that even when every other person did the wrong thing, I, do, I did the right thing. So from there, I would have had courage. So next time, if I was going to have presentation and they laugh at me again and say that I'm different, I would have cited references. I would have presented references and said that, okay, this I did is I did it like this because I learned it, because this is how it is being done. And as of today, I don't think, I don't know if there's any other manager I will ever have that will tell me what I'm doing is wrong when I know it is right. And I will not show them, okay, no matter of arguing with them or fighting with them, but I will not have a conversation with them and say, you know what, okay, no problem. We might try your way, but I do it this way, this way, this way because of this. And because of that, I've been able to, after I learned that, I started building my courage on my little wins. On the little things I did right, I capitalize on them and say, since I can do that right, then I can also do this right. I give it a try. If I fail, I don't let that failure get to me. I go back and try again, and I come back bold and strong. So I don't even know that person wants to contribute to that if we still have extra time. Oh, thank you. Azuri, Azuri had written something about imposter syndrome. Yeah, we're going to get this slide. I'm going to share this slide with um, the PIP team, and they will share it on different forums where they have. Thank you, Lawai. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Any other person? Any other question? Is that all? Yeah, I think that's all. And I even think we've taken a few more minutes more than our time. Everyone, please send Isaac some love. Clubs, confetti, dollars. Thank you, please. Yeah. Send the dollars. Send the dollars, please. Send the dollars. Thank you so, so much. When you have the slides, you'll be able to, you know, go over it. We also have a recording of this session and you can um, see again. Don't forget to build your life, I be your product life, the way you build your products. So there are some things that he mentioned that are very, very valuable, especially towards the end about like mentorship and your career very very important stop thank you once again isaac so we have a few announcements that we want to make the first one is our checking calls they're on saturday second one is our um, interview prep session is next week tuesday and bridget wants to briefly talk about our lagos hangout so if you're in lagos please just give bridget 30 seconds she wants to briefly tell us about our lagos hangout All right, thank you, Princess. Thank you, Isaac. And also, thank you, Azudo, on the comment session for also dropping nuggets for us. We appreciate that. Um, yes, um, Lagos Hangout is coming up. October 7th is the date. 
right for our q3 hangout so we're looking forward to chilling with you guys of course lagos if i wish chilling that's great but please don't don't think it's just lagos we're also having hangouts in other locations um i'm going to make announcements soon we're having hangouts in london for this quarter we're also having hangouts in abuja ilori ibado so hangout locations or details will be shared for other locations but wait for my lagos people which is dear to my heart because lagos i'm having yeah so i just i dropped the link right so if you love to come the fee is eight thousand naira for early bed right and early bed ends september 30th from there we start charging ten thousand naira but you know for those of us who have attended the hangout before our hangouts are always a banger hits hits back to back so you don't want to miss it i want to have a lovely time maybe who knows isaac or azodo will be around who knows but from i know me myself i will be around so if you want to see me yes come please let's chill let's um enjoy and also if you know that i mentioned i didn't mention your locations right for the hangout uh we're also putting up a form if you like to host or attend a hangout in another location that i did not mention um please fill this form okay i've dropped it fill this form on the chat session if you like to see a hangout or attend or host hang out in your locations please fill the form we have uh, let me just for, just for um first get it um just for similar locations where the hangouts are happening for this quarter so that you don't have to start indicating interest again for those locations to host hangout will be happening in lagos abuja ibado Ilori, and london yeah the city of london we're going to be having our uh, hangouts yeah kampala thank you princess and also kampala I don't know i forgot yes kampala will be having hang on to those locations so yes um let me just share the link again for lagos to make the video for lagos there for the if you like the hangout to happen in your city for other cities not mentioned not mentioned yeah so this is the link yeah thank you everyone for giving me this few minutes of your time appreciate that thank you for joining the call yeah thank you again isaac thank you again Lawa. thank you again princess everyone on the call azodo for the um engagement Sebasti, david emery emmanuel god saying god will okay thank time. you I gave it because, and you use more than three minutes of now. Please, um, now. The, thank the you. Link for the hangouts in your city for other cities you didn't mention you have to put a new link because this one is not clickable so isaac wants to say um a last word before we close today isaac you can go okay thank you so much um princess so um i have a blog right i would like us to engage right um if you're a program manager and more especially if you don't have so much background in technical stuff feel free to my link is showing on the on the on the destiny here um recently i've been talking a lot i've been writing a lot about um apis for people that want to learn about technicalities around apis building api products um i'm already entering into the strategy set and strategy side of apis right and also people that are in fintech you want to learn a whole lot about banking as a service embedded payments and stuff how it affects your product and stuff like that how to build and stuff i've been writing about those two i'm, I'm actually very specific about those two for now for the next um few months probably to the end of this year that's all i'll be writing about two or three times every week you see my article so you can feel free to um to go through my blog and read about them thank you all right, guys, thank you once again for joining. So sorry for closing late. We had to just, you know, answer everyone's questions. All right, thank you. See you on Saturday for our weekly check-in calls. Good night, everyone. Have a lovely night. Bye.